probably a good place to start, though. Would you mind, Devin, just tell us a little bit about the history of the Engineering Archive and um, kind of how, when you got set up and how long things have been up and running? Sure. Um, so I guess I guess I was kind of among one of the first um, people and then and then eventually groups that were started talking with um, uh, Center for Open Science uh, last year about about setting this up. So they had they had posted something at some point saying um, they were thinking about doing this, um, creating these these branded preprint uh, uh, services. And so I had reached out to them at, at that time uh, because there was a couple of us in engineering who had talked about it and, you know, had had it in the back of our minds, but, you know, didn't really have the, you know, the, the tool set in order to do that. Um, so when they finally said, you know, okay, we're ready to start, you know, thinking about this and, and working on it, we, we kind of jumped on and, and said, yeah, let, you know, let's try it. And that was maybe back in, uh, you know, probably around June, May or June of 2016. Um, so, you know, eventually they rolled out kind of this, this alpha, you know, version of it, which um, had really, you know, rudimentary landing pages and, and email based submission system and all of that. Um, and we were kind of really feeling out the, the whole process. Uh, and then eventually they they edited it to to look more like what it looks like now um, towards the beginning of this year. So we've been we've been going for you know maybe about a year you know right now um, from that very early stage launch. Uh, and it's you know being an early kind of a, a adopter of anything kind of you know you get a lot of learning process along the way and plus the the service itself is still kind of in development so that. You know the, the process changes from time to time and things like that um but we kind of knew that would be coming uh so we've been growing slowly uh you know we have a little over a hundred um preprint submissions right now which is you know much slower than some of the other services that have launched like um uh Soch archive has you know maybe 1200 or so uh and they launched they actually launched slightly before we did, but pretty close to the same time. Um, but, you know, we're, we're the main thing we're trying to work on is how we can promote uh, community within within engineering that is supportive of doing this kind of thing, you know, of pre-printing and then actually does it. Uh, so that's kind of the main task that our group is working on right now. Not not a ton with the actual technical back end or, or anything related to the archive itself, more how do we get people to buy into the idea of preprinting? Because I, th I think that's uh, kind of one of the questions we're struggling with as well in the uh, earth sciences. We have a couple professional societies and some organizations that we've reached out to and tried to engage with, but um, still trying to think about or and really define uh, what com community engagement and governance is. Is mm -hmm. that, um, have you had any success on, on your end or is any? Um... Well, so so the first in the first, you know, thing that I started doing was enlisting, you know, members of my advisory board and, and, and putting that together. And I tried to get, you know, people who are already, you know, kind of passionate about open access and things like that, just so that I I wouldn't have to convince them you know, to be on board. Um, so that was the approach that I took is getting some people that are already interested in open access and uh, want to make it work. And we're just looking for an outlet to do so. Um, so that, you know, that forms kind of our, you know, I guess governing board. But, you know, like I said, there hasn't been a ton to do other than, you know, anytime kind of some kind of random policy question comes up, uh, we float it around the board and, and, you know, get feedback before going back to you know, Center for Open Science with an answer of how we want to approach, you know, whatever the issue is. Um, from a community engagement side, uh, I think similar to, you know, what you suggested, we've reached out to, you know, a few different organizations and, and either gotten support or, 
or gotten limited in terms of uh, limited response, um, you know, and somewhat some resistance to, you know, say openly supporting preprinting. You know, one of the things we've been looking at is uh, trying to discuss with some of the, you know, bigger publishers in engineering and say, you know, currently your currently your uh, copyright transfer agreement says this, which is, you know, not very supportive of preprinting. Would you consider rewording, you know? this language in your copyright agreement to be supportive of that. Um, and it sometimes we're, you know, met with kind of a, they're, they're interested in maybe thinking about it, but it's not any sort of decision they're going to make soon or things like that, or we just, you know, they just don't really want to talk about it because um, they're not interested. But uh, that's something we're kind of trying to work on is how can we, how can we get the publishers out of the way a little bit so that, you know, the authors feel that they can push a pre or publish a preprint and still submit to whatever journal they were intending to submit to. So we're trying to lower the barriers, um, you know, with whatever capacity we have to do so. Um, and then from a community standpoint, you know, uh, I kind of charged each of each of the advisory board members with um, working within their own, you know, disciplinary specialties to try to get the word out that, that this is an option and a thing to do and help answer questions, um, the inevitable questions that come up. Um, so that's kind of their main task there. Uh, working on trying to organize uh, for a sort of workshop uh, where, where we could invite people uh, to come and, and basically learn what the workflow would be for, you know, incorporating preprints into their normal uh, publishing uh activities um so we're kind of in the you know locating money for that phase right now so i guess those are the main activities that we're kind of working on as far as anything related to governance or community engagement i was just kind of curious you know, in, in your community do you feel like the uh it is kind of getting the publishers somewhat out of the way is that one of the big or is that the big hesitancy to people uh, submitting preprints, or is it still that people may not be aware of it yet and still needs to be a um, branding and getting the message out there as well? I I think it's probably a little bit of both. I mean, you know, certainly the publisher issues are are one thing that people are going to jump to, but on on the other hand, there are you know several publishers who are actually you know supportive, or at least they're not. Uh, not too problematic when it comes to preprinting, and I think people just make the assumption that, you know, preprinting is a problem when maybe it actually isn't for them. Uh, so, you know, kind of two-way street, but um, I think there is a big challenge, like you mentioned, of of just having the community or the, the, the researchers be aware of preprinting. You know, I've had people say, well, they never really even thought about this as a thing to do and, and things like that. So trying to get uh, get the word out there a little bit is is a challenge and, and something to figure out. Uh, with a couple of colleagues um, and I, uh, a couple of them who are on the advisory board for engineering archive, we're just uh, working on a paper where we were going to try to look at, you know, what is the state of open access, you know, uh, penetration in engineering. And we did a little uh, bibliometric study trying to look at the engineering literature and you know found that something like I think it was six and a half percent of published work uh, in engineering is uh, free to read or accessible in some way you know either through an open access publisher or through uh, a repository or something like that so you know engineering I think has a long way to go and I'm sure it's you know probably similar in your field but uh, we have a long way to go to you know, make this a little bit more of the norm. Okay. And in terms of submissions, it sounded like you were, you were mentioning, um, so at, at the moment, uh, the what the Open Science Framework supports is just uh, everything that's submitted becomes immediately available online as a preprint? Uh, right, yeah, so, so the preprint, you know, submission system, and you could, you know, take a look on there and you know, try it out or, or, you know, get, walk through it if you wanted to. Um, but you basically upload the file and, you know, fill in all the, the information and then, and then submit from there. And it's not 
terribly difficult, I don't think. Um, you know, we've only had a few. Uh, I kind of watch, you know, all the new submissions that come through. Um, and we've only had a few that kind of, you know, missed something or didn't really get it. Uh, and so far, again, because there's no moderation yet, um, with those, I've just worked with uh, someone at the Center for Open Science to uh, contact the people who person who submitted and then and then get them to fix whatever issue it is. Um, but in general, I think it's pretty easy, pretty pretty self-explanatory. Okay. So it sounds like Kyle, at least you know, for the moment, that's uh, that kind of oversight and and reaching out to people is kind of manageable right now. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not too bad. I mean, especially well, I mean, maybe you know, for like social archive, it would be a little harder because they have you know a little bit higher volume of stuff coming in than we do. But um, I more or less just give a real cursory glance over something that comes in and if I like I had one you know one piece of spam uh, get submitted and I just emailed uh, emailed Center for Open Science and they contacted the person and said you know basically told them this this is spam or whatever and we don't support it so we're going to remove it and they just let them know that they were doing that uh, and then for the other stuff it was just you know something you know misunderstanding the submission form or something like that so they just emailed the person and had them fix it uh but yeah i mean uh once they have a moderation so system uh built and launched i think that'll make things a little bit easier so that uh, like if something comes in that needs some uh, another look or something like that i can route it or don't do something different with it but still waiting for that uh capability um the other i think the thing that people are waiting for the most is like automatic assignment DOIs to preprints. Uh, so right now they don't automatically assign DOIs yet. And uh, it's supposedly on the roadmap, so it will be coming eventually, but we're still waiting on that. Uh, the, the process for getting a DOI for a preprint is kind of convoluted right now. Um, it is possible, but it's not the easiest thing in the world. And it doesn't, it doesn't work as nice as it should. Are there any other? Uh, Big features or capabilities you think that uh, you're really waiting for? Or you'd like to see implemented? Um, well, the one that I know is supposed to be coming fairly soon, uh, which I which I've been kind of looking forward to personally, just from a branding standpoint, is that you know. So right now, the preprint servers live on a domain name that's you know osf.io slash preprint slash you know engineering archive. Um, so I'm looking forward to uh, being able to send people to engineeringarchive.org and have it just live there, um, which is something they're working on. So having having it rather than a redirect, having it actually live at that domain name, uh, and also then you know when a preprint is posted, it'll it'll have a URL which has the engineeringarchive.org in it. So that'll be nice from a branding standpoint. Um, just because the the URL will be cleaner and it'll it'll you know maybe represent the brand a little bit better, right. and supposedly that's coming in the next couple of weeks here. Um, I think they said they had one more thing that they were finishing up on that, and then and then they were going to push that live. Okay. Now, uh, Bruce or Brandon, do you? I I don't want to hog up all the time here. Did you guys want to jump in? Do you have any questions? Uh, I just on the on your last point i just want to make a comment they just had a release i think yesterday or the day before i didn't look at the change log or what was new um so unless you've spoken with them recently you might want to check to see if that's something they've addressed oh yeah i'll have to look um and and just uh sorry I didn't, sorry devin um, no, i'm also meeting with somebody so i'm become, um for my uh for my institution here in the uk um i'm going to um start to work as an ambassador for osf or for COS slash OSF. Oh, sure. um, so I have a meeting next week. So if you have anything you want me to ask, let me know. I can certainly ask about that and get back to you. Uh, but if there's anything else, um, I know they're pretty responsive. I'm just so I throw it out there. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, in general, I they're they're pretty responsive to email, so that's been helpful. Um, yeah. You know, my only complaint is that at times the development is a little slow, but you know, uh, it is it is what it is for that kind of organization. You know, I don't. I'm sure you know they don't employ an army of developers so they have to be a little bit resource constrained but um 
Yeah, the uh, I haven't looked at the, the most recent release, um, but I know that I know that before it'll work, they have to contact me because I have to update some stuff with the domain name to make it, you know, work with their system. Because I, you know, I still own and manage the domain name, and um, so it isn't going to work until I do something. So I have to, they have to give me that detail. But yeah, I'm hoping, hoping that that'll be live soon. Right on. I know uh, this is Bruce. I know I, I talked to Matt at the COS about um, about the search capabilities inside the archive, and that's something that um, other archives already have. You can do full text search, and uh, he said this is also in their development plan for this calendar year. Um, but to do that, they have to scrape the PDFs and, and pull, pull out HTML to search it. Right. Yeah, that's that's one thing where you know something like the archive itself, you know, the physics one, um, where they have a little bit of an advantage, I think, because they, you know, they require uh, basically the raw text, um, source source text to be submitted, and that way, that's a lot easier to index uh, compared to, to having to dig through a PDF or or whatever other format you submit. Do you? Do you guys think there'd be value in using something like um, like Rash, or basically where you're putting instead of it being a PDF, where you're you're actually publishing a web page that is considered a, is considered a preprint, um, which if you're doing it through something like Git or Bitbucket or whatever, it might be easier to uh, attribute a DOI to. It mm -hmm. might be. I don't know. That's just a, as an open question. I'm not sure. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? I think personally, I think it'd be great if we, if you know, we were um, able to handle that format. Um, yeah, right now it's pretty limited in terms of. I mean, it's not. I mean, you can upload really any type of file, but uh, the types that their previewer will handle are, are is somewhat limited. Um, yeah, it would be nice if 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 we were able to, you know, do some back end conversion. Uh, to display everything as a, you know, an HTML page like a lot of journals are doing now. Um, but then again, you know, it requires a whole back end uh, uh, set of tools for doing that, and probably, you know, probably like a, like some copy editing uh, support or something like that to make sure that things convert correctly and, and all of that. So it would be nice. I'm not sure if that's on the horizon at any point or not. But Right on. Okay. Now, these are really good questions, and it's. Um, I think once once we get going with this, uh, it'd be good to get all of the sort of customers of the COS together, and and sort of uh, you know, see if we can help them understand you know priorities for the development going forward. Uh, that would help us all out, and you know. Yeah, they actually have a, a group. You know, of the the, the preprint uh, hosted preprint service representatives, um, I think they have like an email list, and uh, we've had a couple of phone calls, conference calls, um, but it's been a while now since our last conference call. So I'm guessing things are just moving a little slow at the moment. But um, yeah, that group does sort of exist, and we provide feedback. And you know, a lot of the things, if you've ever looked at their their Google Doc that has the roadmap. Um, you know, a lot of the things that are on there, at least some of them came out of some of those phone calls. Um, but, you know, it's it's always a challenge. You get, you know, you get something on the roadmap, but it's still probably a year out before they actually are able to develop and launch it. Right. Yeah. Uh, they also said they were, you know, actively interested in supporting the this ingestion service that PLOS is creating. Um, which uh, would would add a certain um, a certain amount of uh, of uh, metadata to their data model, um, and uh, but basically it's you know it's another step that uh, has a little bit of time for the submission, but then it creates a package that uh, aligns with what a journal actually needs, so you don't have to do it again for the journal. So it's a sure. Um, it's like you're well, pre. Also, yeah. Go ahead. 
uh, I was just going to say there's also that uh, I, I'm, I'm blank. Uh, I'll probably get the name wrong, but it's like O O A H P M I or something. Um, metadata that that like most of the harvesters want. So, you know, all of the different alt metric uh, service providers, uh, they all harvest in the same format, and I don't think that the OSF preprints is providing that right now. Oh, okay. So like all the alt metrics and the impact story and signs open and all those different services like don't ingest uh, documents that are on the servers very well yet. Right. So that's another conversation they, to have. Yeah, they've been, they've been, you know, I know some of those people have reached out to the Center for Open Science just to say, you know, hey, if you put this metadata on here, then, then, you know, we can index it in all of our services and blah, 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 and, and provide everything that they provide. Um, but I think that's, I don't think that's rolled out yet. Uh, so, Devin, have you had a chance to look at uh, what PLOS is doing and if that might fit in with the engineering archive? Um, I saw it at one time, but I don't, I haven't looked recently and I don't recall all the details. I don't know if you have a, a brief version or of what they're doing. Uh, they were looking for a generic uh, tool that would sit on top of some of these preprint infrastructures, um, like uh, the Open Science Framework, and it would do some automated quality assurance um, and plagiarism detection. Oh, sure. Um, it, it, it sounded like it was um, kind of a, a machine learning type approach where it looked at, it, it needed a sample corpus of documents and it would look for plagiarism, it would look for, um, try to come up with an automated score of how uh, applicable it was to try and filter out spam documents. Uh, and then they were, their ultimate goal was to work towards this uh, one button submission to um, peer reviewed journals so that it, in theory, they had all of the metadata from the preprint submission. So mm -hmm. they could just rearrange it and package it how the journal wanted it. And you can just click the button when you're ready and send it off to a, a journal of your choice. Sure. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be kind of nice. You know, there's a, you know, few different, different services that have kind of tried to enable things similar in order and I, what I, you know i just mean submission direct to a journal from the authoring environment or whatever but yeah direct from the preprint server would be useful i mean that's one thing where like peer j has has done a really good job with their ecosystem um you know you're able to post the preprint and then it's basically a one button submit if you want to submit to their journal anyways but yeah having that more uh uniform across the would be nice. Of course, getting all these various, you know, entrenched old publishers on board is probably the bigger challenge. But. Yeah, it, it seems like that's uh, kind of a big hurdle and a challenge <laughs> in all of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the system may favor some, you know, favor the publishers that are nimble and, and really want to work in this ecosystem. Right. Hopefully. <laughs> it's also, yeah. I think, at some point, you've got to be community driven, too, because if, if we don't, if the community of, of authors doesn't uh, demand those types of changes from from their respective publishers, then then it probably won't happen. But. Exactly. So that's actually one of the reasons why I, I mentioned the rash bit, just because, uh, as an example, just because mm -hmm. it seems like in a lot of these efforts, the publisher is the one that we don't need anymore, right? <laughs> so if you right. can assign a POI to a preprint, then why do I need to send it to another journal to pay them to publish it? It's already published and it's citable. Right. Obviously, there are flaws in that, but um, yeah, anyway. It'd yeah, be great no, if we could move more towards the scientific web instead of paying publishers for things but that's another conversation sorry <laughs> yeah no I'm on, the, I'm on the same page but yeah there's you know a lot of different players also in that okay. so, 
what do you what um, kind of the next steps for the engineering archive? Is it uh, as you mentioned, getting this workshop together and kind of um, bringing the community together around the preprint server? Yeah, that's probably our main thing right now. Um, you know, we're, we're continuing a little bit on the back end. Some of these uh, trying to have these conversations with um, with some of the publishers about their about their copyright language, uh, but. You know, well, luckily we we have one of our one of our board members is at MIT Libraries, and and she has some some friends there who are like, you know, copyright attorney people, uh, copyright law people, and and they're, you know, if they're helping us, you know, with some of the language, like oh, you know, here's this publisher's policy. How could we change it slightly to to make it more open to the preprints, and then and then that way we can reach out to them and say, you know, hey, we'd like you to update your you know, we, we think it'd be a good idea for you looking forward to update your language and here's some suggestions. Now, obviously, whether or not they care or 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 take our uh, take our input well uh, is up in the air, but uh, we're trying to do that. And then, yeah, the workshop piece, um, mainly trying to source uh, some funding options for that, you know, from the various people that are funding open open science, open access type stuff. But you know, that takes time too. Uh, Bruce or Brandon, do you have any other uh, questions for Devin? No, but I think Brandon brought up a good point about, you know, keeping one eye on um, sort of the preprint being the final object at some point um, and, mm -hmm. uh, and what does it take to, to, to get, to, what is the roadway to that future too? Um, yeah, well, in, in other circles, I've had a lot of discussion around the idea of, you know, decoupling the, the publishing and the peer review process, um, you know, where, where the, the publishing is the, the preprint repository or, or whatever, uh, and then the peer review process takes place after that and, and on top of that in a separate layer, but probably or possibly decoupled, meaning not even hosted by the same preprint provider. Um, but anyways, yeah, there's a lot of different models for that. You know, you still got to get around like tenure and promotion committees and, and those sort of folks. But uh, yeah, I think there's a lot to discuss there as well. And, and I think the challenge or, or maybe the opportunity is to try to ensure that the, the preprint servers are, you know, even if not directly, say, pushing that as a as a mechanism, uh, at least making it possible with the tools that we provide. Right. And I think uh, improving citability will, will help help, yeah. you know, along in a, in a good way. So DOIs. Yeah. I feel like the auto, the automatic DOI assignment is pretty critical, and that needs to happen hopefully here soon. I'm not sure where they are in the um, development of that, but it, and not just for the so I agree, not just for the paper, but if they t if there was more of a research object approach, right? So mm -hmm. citing the data, the method, and so on, each one has its own object. Maybe that's a concatenated DOI for a paper. I'm not really sure, but um, that to me seems more. Uh, more preparing for what's going to happen, I think, down the line, rather than just assigning a DOI to a PDF and then having it stored somewhere. We still have sure. to read all these things, right? Right. Well, and, and, you know, some of those, again, those modern journals, like, I think, Pure J and, and some of the other ones, I mean, they're already doing that, um, in that, you know, you can, each figure within the paper, like, has its own DOI. Yeah, there you uh, go. And things like that. So, yeah, and I'm trying to, uh, I want to look back There's here. A... Go ahead. Uh, no, no, I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry, I thought I was muted. Um, there's another newer, newish, newish journal in computers. I think it's computer science. It might be machine learning where they're, I'm sorry, I'm looking through my email now because I can't remember the name of the journal. But it's what you're talking about. It takes that, um, that PLOS approach. It takes it sort of one step further. Um, I'm sorry, I'll have to find it. I can't think of the name. Anyway, it's along the same lines. Sorry. Sure. Yeah. Um, one thing I was just going to try to pull up an example here. Uh, 
take off this one. So, did you want to show your screen or? Um, uh, just it doesn't look like I'm able to to uh, cite. Well, here, yeah, let's. I can show you my screen quick if that would. I don't know how to do that. What am I doing? Share your screen. There we go. Is it work? Is that showing? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just on the engineering archive uh, uh, front page here, and I'm going to click the C example, which just takes one of the preprints. Uh, and one of the things that's kind of nice here, or at least with OSF framework, so it's got a preprint, you know, in the preview, but then down here at the bottom, it has all the other files. Uh, that are associated with this. So if they're displayable, like I can click this one and it'll preview it here as well. Um, but you know, with with OSF preprints, how they they create a project. I can't. Uh, they create a project for every preprint page. So if I click visit project, then uh, then it shows all of the files associated with this. Uh, with this page. Now, here's where you can get a DOI. So if you see up here on the in the header info, there's a DOI assigned to this. And this is kind of the, the current back back uh, workaround way to get a DOI for, for something on here. Um, the only challenge with it is that uh, the DOI points to this project page and not to the preprint page where we started. So that's kind of you know, not the greatest, uh, you know, way to, to, to interact with it. Um, and what I was looking for was to see if, if you could assign individual DOIs to each of these files, but I don't think that you can. Um, yeah, because you can only assign it to the project page, I believe. So, yeah, that, that one kind of be a, uh, Sorry, sorry say again. No, no, I was just going to say, I didn't, sorry to cut you off again. Uh, you can't yeah. there, but you can integrate with Figshare, and in Figshare you can... You can yeah. assign DOIs to your figures and so forth. But I think that was like, again, I think that was one of those things that they are um, attempting. Yeah, to, that, to that would address. be Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, you could do it with Figshare and stuff. You know, everything here is stored on, on OSF storage itself. Um, but yeah, if you brought in Figshare as your, your, your uh, host, um, then you could do that. Uh, but that would, yeah, that would be a good feature is if you could assign a DOI to each one of these individual files that are, you know, within the project page. I'll turn this off. Uh, so kind of touchy on those, you know, individual objects. And uh, in the earth science is there's been some discussion about um, other objects being put into a print uh, into a preprint system, um, for example, um, posters from conferences, and uh, are they or are they not preprints? And I'm just curious if um, has anything similar come up in uh, in engineering? Uh, we haven't really tried to address that uh, yet, and it hasn't hasn't come up as a problem yet. Uh, I meaning, like you know, we get missions that way or anything. Um, so, no, I guess I don't have an answer there yet of whether or not we count those as preprints. Well, obviously, you know, a service like Figshare, which isn't necessarily a preprint rep uh, repository, but obviously Figshare allows any format you want, um, you know, makes it citable and all of that. Um, so, I don't know. I haven't really thought too much about it. How, how, about, how about your group? I think we're we're kind of split on the issue. Um, uh, we we certainly don't want to lose those. Um, in particular, we have one uh, uh, yearly conference, which is pretty well attended, and it's one of the bigger ones in the earth sciences. And uh, usually, like about ten thousand or so posters, and it, um, we'd like a place to keep those and make them searchable. But at the same time, it it seems that that's um, 
in a sense, maybe a project that's finished or at a point where the results are, are published. And um, it, it, even the electronic representation of the poster seems to be a kind of a different entity than mm -hmm. what we generally think of as preprints. And so we're I, I mean, kind of, yeah, sorry, we're just kind of trying to kick around a couple ideas of some way to keep them, but maybe separate them from the paper preprints. Right. I mean, it seems like there's a, you know, there's a possible in between where, you know, the authors create a, you know, one page or even less abstract document, which serves as the preprint. Uh, and then the poster file itself is a, an additional supporting document. So, you know, so if it's living on, on OSF, like we, like we were just looking at, it's one of those additional files that's there, but, you know, the preprint itself is maybe the the one page, you know, very brief summary or, or something like that. That's what um, e research Austral Australia or Australasia do. They have the so they have the two page extended abstract, which is your publication. And then mm -hmm. on that page after the conference, if you want, you can put a link to the poster, which is sort of your responsibility. So there's a lot of like F1000 links and stuff like that. Sure. Have you have you looked at um have you ever looked at the Journal of Open Source Software? Ooh, I'm not sure. Here, let me show you that one quick. So if you go to joss.boj.org, this is the Journal of Open Source Software, and it's completely housed on GitHub. Uh, and the basic idea behind it is that, uh, you know, if you've written a piece of software and it's on GitHub and it's got proper documentation, mm -hmm. you can prepare an extremely brief paper like, I think they basically say it should not be more than a few sentences describing what it is. Uh, and then they peer review it, but they're not really peer reviewing the paper, they're peer reviewing the software. Right on. And, um, uh, let's see if I click papers here. So they're peer reviewing the software, and then that software is uh, what gets published. I mean, the paper is the paper, but uh, the software is, you know, really what they're looking at. So if I go here, I can look at any one of these here. Um, I don't know which one is, you know, a good example, but uh, so if you click on their DOI, which, you know, is hosted on their site, if I click on this paper, oh, it's going to download it. So you can see the paper is like, you know, two paragraphs, not even two paragraphs, hardly. And the real, uh, the real piece that they're actually, you know, uh, peer reviewing is the repository for the software itself. So that's what they're looking for. Good documentation, um, you know, conforms to all of their requirements. And if you want to look at uh, the peer review, it's all here on GitHub as a GitHub issue. And the peer reviewers, let's see if I scroll down far enough, are all in here. So they have their peer review, the person makes the edits, they go back and take another look, and then eventually it's it's published. But um, the paper version of it is extremely brief. I like that. I actually I really like their, you know, how they're um, how they're doing these. And I think that there's analogs probably in a lot of other fields as well but you know modifying so it you, yeah yeah if you had your your model your code your r code or whatever it was mm -hmm. for your so if that was your object again research object um for the in part of your method right mm -hmm. uh, yeah anyway that, yeah i really like that i actually think this this system that they've developed um i think it could work really well like you know, building a, a peer review journal platform on top of preprint servers. So, you know, say you you allow the the article to be posted wherever, Figshare, Engineering Archive, you know, uh, cost or OSF preprints wherever. Uh, you you submit a link to that, and then and then the peer review process all takes place through this system uh, until it's finalized. I mean, in that case, you don't really have to the journal isn't acting necessarily as a host it's almost acting just as the peer review layer built on top of you know all of our network of, of places you could post preprints
but yeah, maybe we've gotten off topic. <laughs> no, it's, it's really uh, interesting idea. I think I'll have to see, you know, particularly in the earth science, if we could move some, towards something like, you know, like like that setup. Yeah, I think you know, I think step one is is getting people to getting people comfortable with with preprinting itself, and then start saying. You know, and then once people are okay posting preprints, then you start saying, well, you know, now that we're all posting preprints, what do we really need these journals for? Yeah, that's kind of what happened in physics, in a way. Um, yeah. And once everyone is citing the preprints, because they're already open and findable and searchable and usable, um, yeah, then the that other stuff becomes vestigial. Right. Well, and I've seen there was at least one example of someone in, uh, I don't know, biology or something like that. They posted their preprint on, or they posted their article on uh, BioArchive. I think they had gotten some feedback on it by someone who read it there, or a couple people who read it there. Uh, they edited it, posted a new version, and then just said, hey, this is going to be the final version. We're not, you know, it's not going to a journal. This is it. You know, you might have to be at a certain point in your career at some places to be able to do that. But. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. I guess, particularly in academia, there's still the tenure review process, and committees don't, uh, uh, you know, for better or for yeah. worse, still seem to look for journal publications. Yeah, depends how open-minded they are, I guess. But. Yeah, so we have to work on that culture too. A um, mm -hmm. lot of work to do. Uh, well, this has been very interesting and very insightful. I think it, it really helps uh, guide our thinking uh, moving forward. So I just want to thank you again for taking the time, Devin. Sure. Well, thanks so much for asking me. Sorry I couldn't make it uh, at one of the earlier calls. Yeah, thanks, Devin. All right. Um, anything else for me or, or should I? I don't know if you guys have more to address, you know, after I go. But uh, I guess anything else for me or otherwise I can I can log out. Um, I, I think that's all I had. Uh, Bruce, Brandon, did you have any anything else? No, I can't think of anything right now. Thanks, Devin. No, I'm good. All right. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Okay. Looking forward to seeing your uh, your service. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks again for joining us. Sure. Bye now.